friends today we are going to review korean movie deliver us from evil wang jung min is in nan a former cop turned paid assassin who has just whacked a zayuka zaykuza in tokyo and now this dead man's fanatically violent blood brother ray is out for revenge to add to this in nan hears that his former girlfriend has been killed in Bangkok following a bungled attempt to make contact with the kidnappers of his nine-year-old nine daughter and the child is still alive. In the abductor's haze, Ming then journeys to Thailand on a desperate attempted mission. can help him in is Yui. Yui is a transgender woman who, for all that she is no mobster, manages at one stage to ram a van with her pickup truck, saving In Nam's life. <clears throat> the twin storylines should determine the film's pace and focus. They don't. There are some impressively spectacular shootouts in the streets and a barn level rooftop chase. Together, with some very country close quarters martial arts. Huang, his face almost always covered in beads of sweet, is a very persuasive and impassive action hero, and Lee is creepy and uproariously over the top. Could he be a Bond villain in the years to come? The 007 franchise could certainly do a lot worse. You have probably seen a movie like Deliver Us from Evan, the second feature of Evan Bauer, Hell Von the Korean action thriller is a revenge story about a killer with a hut of tarnished gold, risking it all for an innocent. Like many hitman movies, it's about the ultimate tragedy of someone realizing they want to get out of a murderous lifestyle but can't, and that their lifetime spent killing will always be reflected back upon them. Thankfully, though this is the kind of premise that Liam Neeson, Nicolas Cage, or countless other actors have churned out as a paycheck. Cashing B movie, Hong Kong's garnishing of this, his realism with savvy style and a game, villain blaster bolsters the lack of novelty with quality. Gather us from Elvis. Deliver us from Evil's sweetie thrills might be derivative, but they are far from dead on arrival. In them, a clenched jaw of a hitman has just finished his requisite one laugh job and is, as later dictates, immediately pulled back in. His ex girlfriend, whom he had to leave when he first started up in the, this underworld gig, needs his help. Her young daughter has been kidnapped, and in them is just enough of a softy for the situation to affect this, his inner. Bad news for the kidnappers, but also bad news for in Nam, whose last job attracted some array of its own from a vengeful Yakuza known as the Butcher. The ensuing cascading pursuits hope between languages and locales, all with a straightforward brutality that attests to Hong Kong's skillfully frank scripting, eventually con converging in Bangkok. Here, Inna meets Yui, a transgender comic relief character who is lending a hand for enough cash to afford surgery. Her over the top initially kayaking regularly, but she also lends some much needed emotion to the otherwise hyper macho ensemble. She is an imperfect character that I wish was never played for laughs. It was never played by the sick gender, actor Park. But I was pleasantly surprised that the writing eventually veered towards depicting her detractors as scummy and her reactions as realistic rather than melodramatic. While Park earned the most critical praise in Korea, showing that this kind of casting attracts similar awards attention outside of Hollywood. It's Lee, who's the real standout of the cast. He is perfectly pitched. Fun and scary, embodying and adding nuance to his prototypical garish and serpentine gangster executioner. His styling is great, but his restraint when teasing out the butcher's unhinged and 
unrelenting na nature is better. Hong lets him to be cool too, but kicks a metal pan underneath a soon-to-be blood victim, hanging from the ceiling with an engrossing and terrifying non-challenge. It's a slick movie in service of both story and character, the combination of which Hong Kong Hong manages is in nearly every scene. The contrast between Lee and Huang is well metered. If ever there was going to be another live action Yakuza adaption, Hung beats Takashi Miki at his own game conducting these two. So he's also got a good eye for stark, shadowy images and a solid sense of action timing. Some effective uses of slow and accelerated motion, emphasizing a windshield shattering under shotgun fire or the adrenaline fueled impact of haymakers flash just perfectly frequently enough not to feel overbearing these flourishes help fights that's that are sharply staged but rarely shot with the same groundedness with which they are choreographed scrappy fights done by professionals look like they could evoke the kind of overwhelming inescapable violence of john wick club 2 or an old boy hallway brawl. Instead, inopportune opportune edits jaggeringly reframe things just when they are heating up with the kind of detail that realistically shifts the narrative of combat. A gun runs out of bullets, a knife flies out of a hand, or when they threaten to make a statement about the desperation of extended melees, as often as the fights submerge you in the criminal underworld the filmmaking choices keep pulling you back out by your collar of course everyone's in a while it will unleash something superhuman with such panity that you will happily let the film yank you around a dirty job done with reasonable skill deliver us from evil's bleakest moments come when it gives a holy into its stereotype fridging woman writing it lead as overly stoic when Huang's much better when he is able to emote, plotting a series of two familiar to similar confrontations. But Hong's ability with camera and tone hint at a filmmaker ready to apply himself to a more unique tale, going either deeper into noir nastiness or higher into the over-the-top action stratosphere. Stuck in the middle is a hitman thriller is a passable showcase of potential. Action films from Asia, most notably Hong Kong and South Korea, tend to be high-quality productions full of energy and dramatic fight scenes. Deliver us from Evil, a recent gangland story written by and directed by Won Chen Hung, is no exception. Deliver us from Evil comprises two plots which centers, center on the same assassin, who is itching to step away from the criminal life. Kim In Nam discovers that the girlfriend he left several years ago is not just deceased but has left him a daughter, now kidnapped, and travels to Thailand to find and rescue her. At the same time, Wei, a Japanese gangster also known as the Butcher, is on the hunt for Enna. As his last victim, Wei, was Ray's blood brother. Both men are utterly focused on their goals, and as they get closer to their targets, the head count rises. The cast are all excellent, even Park Soi. Who plays Yo Min, Kim In Nam's daughter? Huang Jung Min's talent shows partially in the early scenes when Kim In Nam is struggling with first leaving his love, then discovering what has happened to her. The other actor, who is particularly worth nothing, noting is Park Jung Min, who plays Yui, the trans woman who Kim In Nam hires to guide him around Bangkok. So this role must have been a bold one to take for a popular leading actor in. He apparently met with transgender people to get it right. But I have to wonder whether trans actors were also considered for the role. Having directed one film before and write, written several, Won Ten Hong has shown he can combine both here. I appreciated the way the characters developed and the way the plot strength came together, though I must say, I felt they contributed to a somewhat erratic tone. There were several remarkable action scenes, fight chases and car crashes, made polished by Hong Kyung P. 
pure cinematography using moments of slow motion and lighting to sparkling effect these felt like set people though rather than integrate uh, integral elements to the plot as the change in a mood broke up what was otherwise contemplative in comparison a determined quest after all kim in nam was looking for a fight but looking for a child what made the liberals from evil enjoyable was the characters and the action what made it fascinating was the two themes which were gradually revealed firstly by use of four languages and two contrasting cultural settings the film deftly demonstrates the co cosmopolitan nature of the criminal underworld kim in nam had contacts all around asia but now he was unfamiliar with the special interests of thai gangs such as organ trading to order I was a little baffled at the use of a religious phrase for the title at first until I realized that Deliverers from Evil was a line from the Christian prayer Our Father. The other theme I noticed in the film was unconventional family relationships. Kim In Nam hadn't known he was a parent, but his commitment to his missing daughter was almost instant. Yui found herself developing a maternal bond towards the child and yet couldn't face her own child who had known her as a father. Despite the ups and downs of to of deliver us from evil, it is a joy to watch. And even though it alternate from interesting to spectacle, I was gripping to find out how things would turn out for the characters I had become attached to. I was so impressed with the team all around. that i have already been hunting down other titles that everyone was involved with <clears throat> from the writer of the chaser and the yellow sea and reuniting the stars of the ten gangster thriller new world deliver us from evil is a relentless thriller that melts character and action near perfectly despite using well worn action tropes as a framework to pit two men against one another the film spins a refreshing take on the to constantly surprise the viewer and ultimately deliver an emotional value starting off relatively low key it sees killer for hire in nam complete his one last job for his employer in order to retreat, retire and live the quiet life in panama however it's never that easy as an old flame calls on in nam when her daughter is kidnapped in bangkok at first refusing to get involved in nam in man is then forced to search for the child when events take an even darker turn heading to bangkok in search of the child in nam must also deal with the relentless killer who goes by the apt name ray the butcher the brother of the man assassinated in the opening scene by in man who is merciless killing machine handle bent on revenge so far so familiar killer taking one last shot a kidnapped child in need to of rescue and a killer in pursuit to extract revenge are all familiar elements but deliver us from evil spins a much more complex narrative that pushes the pursued and the pursuer to their absolute limits so it's also a film about redemption and how in vengeance can all consume leading the unnecessary death and destruction but to say any more would be to ruin the film and the surprises it has in store for a first time viewing just when one thinks they have a handle on the narrative it zigs and sort of zags and just thrusts the viewer down a new narrative path it's never in doubt the two leads will clash but there is so much more going on in deliver us from evil that it's best to know as little as possible to enjoy the ride and experience the emotional impact in amongst all the chasing and carnage there is real emotional stake threaded throughout as in nam does everything in his power to find the missing child a child who is put through unthinkable odds which elicits never nerve shredding tension as a girl and in nam are thrust into an ever darker world park so yi is turning as the kidnapped young strain likewise Huang Jungmin and Lee Jungjae as the two leads are phenomenal cementing their Korean cinema leading man status but special mention should also go to Park Jungmin 
who plays a pivotal part part in proceedings and play a transgender character not often given the kind of exposure seen here is the welcome and dynamic inclusion and part of me give an outstanding performance writer and director one chain han after orchestrates the mayhem with a sword of plan galloping from brutal night flight fight gunplay and come the finale full on chaos meaning the action really delivers down and dirty the action is sharply staged and escalates in extremity as the film progresses and the protagonists plight reaches fever pitch yet the action never overshadows the character work the thriller element or the emotional core of the film mention should also go to the score which propels the action and mounts the tension expertly and is one of the best scores of recent memory the action certainly in the second half perhaps becomes a little too outlandish somewhat at odds and with the more grounded sequences with seen earlier in the film and there are a few instances of convenience and hap- happenstance <coughs> in order to keep the plot moving but <clears throat> these are minor niggles for what is a near perfect concoction of thriller action and emotional character work a dark thriller in an exhilarating action film deliver us from evil is one of the year's best movie though fatherly guy protects younger girl it's a movie trope that's been done to death yet across hollywood bollywood beijing and beyond the storytelling formula continues to attack both audiences and earliest male action stars korean cinema is no exception with 2020 is deliver us from evil as the latest example of this phenomenon in deliver for us from evil top rocking actor hwang jung min stars as an intelligent officer turned hitman who must save his young daughter from thai gangsters while simultaneously fending off a yakuza enforcer The film displays limited originality with its Thai backdrop and depiction of a transgender character but otherwise focuses on delivering reliable mass market entertainment with little philosophical fuss. At the start of the Deliver Us from Evil, assassin Kim In Nam kills an ethnically Korean yakuza boss named Korida in what's supposed to be his last hit. Meanwhile in Thailand, a Korean woman named Seo Young Ju Stops her young daughter Yumin off at school. However, organ harvesting Thai gangsters kidnapped Yumin. Yudo gets murdered while trying to save her. So these disparate threads come together when Korean authorities notify Innam about Young Ju's death. As it turns out, Kim and Seo were lovers back when Kim was an agent for South Korea's Korea's National Intelligence Service. However, due to a power struggle within the NIS. Kim had to go into hiding and become a hitman, leaving Seo behind and never learning that he had a daughter, Yumin, driven to avenge young Jews. Death and save his newfound daughter Kim travels to Thailand and begins hunting down the gangsters who kidnapped Yumin. Along the way, he enlists a transgender woman named Yu to help translate and navigate the local landscape. However, there's an extra twist beyond the gangsters. Ray, deceased yakuza boss Korida's sadist brother, had also come to Thailand to kill Kim in revenge. Deliverance from Evils, Thai backdrop is somewhat novel for Korean action movies, which generally have lower budgets than their Hollywood veteran veteran and thus don't shoot abroad as often. However, Deliverance from Evils pretty much copies Hollywood film. Cheats local characters as expendable cannon fodder. However, deliver us from Evels and clues in of a transgender character with Yui is worth cautiously lauding. While Yui unfortunately perpetuates stereotypes associating Thailand with lady boys, her presence is novel given that the fatherly guy protects younger girl. Yanner usually perpetuates established gender norms instead of challenging them. Deliver us from Evel treats Yui's gender as a non-factor. She is just another character with human motivations, and the fact that she is trans in just is just a natural part of life. Even if South Korean society retains certain conservative attitudes, the fact that a 
unabashedly mainstream film like Deliver Us from Abel can cast a major hot drop actor as a trans character and earn big bucks at the box office is a positive sign. This shouldn't be surprising though the major Korean dramas like uh, It Taiwan Class already include trans characters in an encouraging manner. Beyond its setting and trans representation though, Deliver Us from Evil is a pretty standard action blockbuster. There is fist fights and gunfights are plenty and the character development is adequate but not the priority. Asian cinema athosists might recall the main from Nowhere which is still probably the best Korean movie in the fatherly guy protects younger girl sub -gainer. but the both the man from nowhere and deliver us from evil feature farber nic agents who fight organ harvesting gangsters to rescue a kidnapped girl because of this deliver us from evil feels a lot like somebody transplanted the man from nowhere to thailand and made the tone less brooding whereas the man from nowhere occurs across dark rainy days and deploys a blue and black visual palette Deliver us from evil occurs during bright daylight and utilizes warmer colors. In the men from nowhere, our fatherly guy, protagonists, seems deeply haunted by his past. In Deliver us from evil, Kim in Nam's traumas aren't as visible, and non violent supporting character like Yui provide a counterbalance to brutality. This brighter and more humanistic tone makes Deliver us from evil more accessible to mass audiences but also makes it far less contemplative than The Man From Nowhere or other noted revenge key movies like A Bittersweet Life. In our view, hunting philosophical echoes are what help action movies will become timeless. So it's a pity that Deliver Us From Evil doesn't lean more in this direction. Despite this, the film still provides a great degree of entertainment and should please anybody looking for a solid action flick. If the title of Hong Wong Won Chan's nihilistic slog of a crime thriller deliver us from evil points to anything, it's that the film's milieu is made up almost entirely of deplor deplorable men in a contained ecosystem of violence. Most of them, some might argue all of them, are well beyond any sort of deliverance or redemption. But the film certainly tries to grant its hero just that through a gamut of root devices, denying the perhaps more interesting anti-romantic streak implied by its fatalistic streak. Of note here is the reunion of a new world stars Hwang Jun Min, Jung Min and Lee Jung Jai, who do their best to bring some spark of life to the film. But it's rarely enough in, the mo in a movie with so few thematic ideas and mostly bad formal ones. Hwang plays in Nam, a Korean hitman who just wants out to the of the game but finds his past hard to escape. That past rears its ugly head in the film's two convergent threads. When an ex-girlfriend turned up died in Thailand after her da daughter, three guesses on daddy's identity is kidnapped. Hwang travels to Thailand to rescue the kid from black market organ tombers. A twist so characteristically grim it plays as oblivious. Meanwhile, in Nam is pursued by Ray, the sworn blood brother of a Yakuza member in Nam killed, embodied by Lee Jung Jai, going wonderfully over the top like a relentless video game villain. Ray's quest for vengeance is generally more engaging than in Nam's redemption arc. In part, due to Lee's commitment, but mostly because the development of a dead woman and an endangered child as fuel, fuel for a hitman's pathos is a road. Misognistic device that Hong never turns into anything more than simplistic sentimentality so that an audience might tear up a little in between bouts of cheering for ultraviolence. It would be remiss in discussing the film's dramatic failures may not to remark upon the film's trans woman character, Yui, who acts as In Nam's guide in Thailand. She is treated as more other people in the film's film are like shit. Though, of course, what's thrown at her is a result of identity rather than affection. While it's easy to imagine someone mounting a defense of the film's barrage of 
transphobia as a reflection of the attitudes of its milieu. A fair but honestly tired point. Hung obviously has nothing to say about transgender experience outside of gay. I imagine it's difficult to be trans and centers Yui's entire motivation on her desire for gender affirmation surgery. She is, like in Nam's child, a conduit for simple sympathy and redemption for our hero. Of course, she is played by cisgender Man Park Jong Min in an embarrassingly fussy, tick laden performance and in case you thought famous men being awarded for this piss tour portals of trans women was a distinctly American phenomenon. Park won the Blue Dragon for supporting actor for, the, for his work. The most credit I can muster for this film's representation is that it does case treat transgender and cisgender women equally. So objects to help you perceive the man who just shot 20 guys in the brain as a good person. So no surprise that Deliver Us From Evil is no great shake in its attempts at severe drama, but it's not much as an action film either. In Nam and Ray dispatch plenty of wounds in plenty of ways so that they will never have to wait too long to see someone get fucked up if that's what you are here for. But the usual problems, arithmetic editing, obscurant camera angles, more mar most of the close quarters fight sequences plus when fight scenes are so obviously going for hard hitting realism. An ill advised overuse of perfunctory speed ramping renders most of its phony. So that's not to say where there are there's no good action. There's a pretty exciting car chase and a solid fight in a stairwell that will likely pop up out of context on YouTube. But even the best stuff here feels derivative, like a pale imitation of a handful of superior action movies from the past decades. Lee on the other hand, Hoang Jung Min and Lee Jung joy partner up for the first time in seven years since New World. So if you have Asian action films that are all too predictable and dotted with gang culture and violence, you will have no problem sitting through the, this film with ticks along nicely. It's recently never dull and moves at a fast pace, with knives were very much the weapon of choice in most cases. From the start, Hwang Jung Min's in Nam at the lead character is a bit dull and doesn't quite come across as the strong, silent contract killer whom you had to think would have a stronger personality. Despite his best efforts and obvious star power, this was not his best. Lee, on the other hand, has an unbelievable presence and was a lot more fun to watch as the crazy, over-the-top, charismatic gangster. You could see he relished playing the bloodthirsty butcher after years of playing romantic leads and stern action heroes. Here he is flamboyant, knife-wielding wild, catwalk-ready gangster, strutting around in goosey sunglasses and white stench coats. You just can't hate him even though he plays the bad guy because he is just so engaging. This film might draw a few criticisms, but it provides a great degree of entertainment for the right audience and should keep anyone looking for a solid Asian flick happy. Wang Jung Min is in now a former cop turned paid assassin who has just rocked a Zayuka, Zaykuza in Tokyo. And now this dead man's fanatically violent blood brother Ray is out for revenge. To add to this, in them hears that his former girlfriend has been killed in Bangkok following a bungled attempt to make contact with the kidnappers of his Nine, her nine-year-old daughter and the child is still alive in the abductor's hands. So, in them journeys to Thailand on a desperate, redemptive mission to save this little girl with the scary and bloody thirsty ray on his trail and the only person in Bangkok who can help him in is Yui. Yui is a transgender woman who for all that, she is no mobster, manages at one stage to ram a van with her pickup truck, saving 
in Nam's life. <clears throat> the twin storylines should determine the film's pace and focus. They don't. There are some impressively spectacular shootouts in the streets and a burn devil rooftop chase together with some very crunchy close quarters martial arts. When his face almost always covered in beads of sweat, his very persuasive and impassive action hero and Lee is creepy and uproariously over the top. Could he be a Bond villain in the years to come? The 007 franchise could certainly do a lot worse. You have probably seen a movie like Deliver Us from Evil, the second feature held by Hong Won Chan. This Korean action thriller is a revenge story about a killer with a heart of tarnished gold, risking it all for an innocent. Like many hitman movies, it's about the ultimate tragedy of someone realizing they want to get out of a murderous lifestyle but can't, and that their lifestyle spent killing will always be reflected back upon them. Thankfully, though this is the kind of premise that Liam Neeson, Nicolas Cage or countless other actors have churned out as a paycheck. Cashing B-Movie, Hong Kong's garnishing of this his realism with savvy style and again, villain bluster bolsters the lack of novelty with quality. Deliver us from Elvis. Deliver us from Evel's sweetie thrills might be derivative, but they are far from dead on arrival. In them, a clinched jaw of a hitman has just finished his requisite one last job and is as nature dictates immediately pulled back in his ex-girlfriend, whom he had to leave when he first started up in the air. This underworld gig needs his help. Her young daughter has been kidnapped, and in them is just enough of a safety for this situation to attack this, his enemy. Bad news for the kidnappers, but also bad news for in Nam, whose last job attracted some Array of its own from a vengeful Yakuza known as the Butcher. The ensuing cascading pursuits hope between languages and locales, all with a straightforward brutality that attests to Hong Kong's skillfully framed scripting, eventually con converting in Bangkok. Here, in Nam meets Yui. A transgender comic relief character who is lending a hand for enough cash to afford certain. Her over the top stick is initially tired and regressive, but she also lends some much needed emotion to the otherwise hyper macho ensemble. She is an imperfect character that I wish was never played for laughs and was never played by the sick gender actor Park. But I was pleasantly surprised that the writing eventually veered towards depicting her detractors as scummy and her reactions as realistic rather than melodramatic. While Park earned the most critical praise in Korea, showing that this kind of casting attracts similar awards attention outside of Hollywood. It's Lee, who's the real standout of the cast. He is perfectly pitched, fun and scary, embodying and adding nuance to his prototypical garish and serpentine gangster executioner. His styling is great, but his resting twin teasing out the butcher's unhinged and unrelenting nature is better. Hong lets him to be cool too but kicks a metal pan underneath a soon-to-be blood victim, hanging from the ceiling with an engrossing and terrifying non talents It's a slick movie in service of both story and character, the combination of which Hong Kong Hong manages is in nearly every scene. The contrast between Lee and Huang is well metered. If ever there was going to be another live-action Yakuza adaption, Hong beats Takashi Miki at his own game conducting these two. So he is 
also got a good eye for stark, shadowy images and a solid sense of action timing. Some effective uses of slow and accelerated motion, emphasizing a windshield shatter under shotgun fire or the adrenaline fueled impact of haymakers, flashes perfectly frequently enough not to feel overbearing. These flourishes have fights that's, that are sharply staged, but rarely shot with the same groundedness with which they are choreographed. Scrappy fights done by professionals look like they could evoke the kind of overwhelming, inescapable violence of John Wick Club 2 or an old boy hallway brawl. Instead, in opportune, opportune addicts jaggeringly reframe things just when they are heating up with the kind of detail that realistically shifts the narrative of combat. A gun runs out of bullets, a knife flies out of a hand, or when they threaten to make a statement about the desperation of extended melees, as often as the fights submerge you in the criminal underworld, the filmmaking choices keep pulling you back out by your collar. Of course, everyone's in a while. It will unleash something superhuman with such panity that you will happily let the film yank you around. A dirty job done with reasonable skill delivers us from Abel's bleakest moments come when it gives a holy into its stereotype, fridging woman, writing its lead as overly stoic when Hwang's much better when he is able to emote, plotting a series of two familiar, two similar confrontations. But Hong's ability with camera and tone hint at a filmmaker ready to apply himself to a more unique tale, going either deeper into noir nastiness or higher into the over-the-top action stratosphere. Stuck in the middle is a hitman thriller is a passable showcase of potential. Action films from Asia, most notably Hong Kong and South Korea, tend to be high-quality productions full of energy and dramatic fight scenes. The film is from a recent and story written by and directed by Won King Hong is no exception. Deliverance from Evil comprises two plots which centers center on the same assassin who is itching to step away from the criminal life, King In Nam discovers that the girlfriend he left several years ago is not just deceased but has left him a daughter, now kidnapped, and travels to Thailand to find and rescue her. At the same time, Ray, a Japanese gangster also known as the Butcher, is on the hunt for Enna, as his last victim Ray was Ray's blood brother. Both men are utterly focused on their goals, and as they get closer to their targets, the head count rises. The cast are all excellent, even Park Soi, who plays Yo Min, Kim In Nam's daughter. Huang Jung Min's talent shows partially in the early scenes when Kim In Nam is struggling with first leaving his love, then discovering what has happened to her. The other actor, who is particularly worth nothing. Noting is Park Jung Min, who plays Rui, the trans woman who Kim In Nam hires to guide him around Bangkok. So, this role must have been a bold one to take for a popular leading actor, and he apparently met with transgender people to get it right. But I have to wonder whether trans actors were also considered for the role. Having directed one film before and Right, written several. Won Chen Han has shown he can combine both here. I appreciated the way the characters developed and the way the plot string came together. Though I must say, I felt they contributed to a somewhat erratic tone. There were several remarkable action scenes, fight chases, and car crashes made polished by Hong Kyung pure cinematography using moments of slow motion and lighting to sparkling effect. These felt like set pieces, though 
rather than integrate uh, integral elements to the plot as the change in a mood broke up what was otherwise contemplative in comparison a determined quest after all kim in nam was looking for a fight but looking for a child what made deliver us from ever enjoyable was the characters and the action what made it fascinating was the two themes which were gradually revealed firstly by use of four languages and two contrasting cultural settings the film darkly demonstrates the co cosmopolitan nature of the criminal underworld kim in nam had contacts all around asia but he how he was unfamiliar with the special interest of thai gangs such as organ trading to order i was a little baffled at the use of a religious phrase for the title at first until i realized that deliver us from evil was a line from the christian prayer our father the other theme i noticed in the film was unconventional family relationships kim in nam hadn't known he was a parent but his commitment to his missing daughter was almost instant Yui found herself developing a maternal bond towards the child and yet couldn't face her own child who had known her as a father despite the ups and downs up to of deliver us from evil it is a joy to watch and even though it alternate from interesting to spectacle i was gripping to find out how things would turn out for the characters i had become attached to I was so impressed with the team all around that I have already been hunting down other titles that everyone was involved with <clears throat> from the writer of the chaser and the yellow sea and reuniting the stars of the stunning gangster thriller new world deliver us from evil is a relentless thriller that melds character and action deal perfectly Despite using well-worn action tropes as a framework to pit two men against one another, the film spins a refreshing take on those these tropes to constantly surprise the viewer and ultimately deliver an emotional wallop. Starting off relatively low key, it sees killer for hire in Nam complete his one last job for his employer in order to retreat, retire and live the quiet life in Panama. However, it's never that easy as an old flame calls on in Nam when her daughter is kidnapped in Bangkok. At first, refusing to get involved in Nam, in man is then forced to search for the child when events take an even darker turn. Heading to Bangkok in search of the child in Nam must also deal with the relentless killer who goes by the apt name Ray the Butcher, the brother of the man assassinated in the opening scene by In Man, who is merciless killing machine handle bent on revenge. So far, so familiar. Killer taking one last job, a kidnapped child in need of rescue, and a killer in pursuit to extract revenge are all familiar elements, but deliver us from Evil spins a much more complex narrative. That pushes the pursued aim, the pursuer to their absolute limits. So it's also a film about redemption and how vengeance can all consume, leading the unnecessary death and destruction. But to say any more would be to ruin the film and the surprises it has in store for a first time viewing. Just when one thinks they have a handle on the narrative, it zigs. Instead of zags and tusks, tusks the viewer down a new narrative path. It's never in doubt the two leads will clash, but there is so much more going on in Deliver Us from Evil that it's best to know as little as possible to enjoy the ride and experience the emotional impact. In amongst all the chasing and carnage, there is real emotional state threaded throughout as In Nam does everything in his power to find the missing child a child who is put through unthinkable odds which elicits never nerve shedding tension as a girl and in them are thrust into an 
ever darker world. Park So Yi is telling as the kidnapped young Serene. Likewise, Huang Jung Min and Lee Jung Jai as the two leads are phenomenal, cementing their Korean cinema leading man statuses. But special mention should also go to Park Jung Min, who plays a pivotal part in proceedings and play a transgender character not often given. The kind of exposure seen here, it's a welcome and dynamic inclusion and Park Jung Min gives an outstanding performance. Writer and director Won Chan Hung Oscar orchestrates the mayhem with a sword aplomb, delivering some brutal night fly fights. Then he in comes the finale, full on chows, meaning the action really delivers. Down and dirty, the action is sharply staged and escalates in extremity as the film progresses and the protagonist's plight reaches fever pitch. Yet the action never overshadows the character work. The thriller element, or the emotional core of the film, mention should also go to the score which propels the action and mounts the tension expertly and is one of the best scores of recent memory. The action certainly in the second half perhaps becomes a little too outlandish somewhat at odds and with the more grounded sequences we've seen earlier in the film eh, there are a few instances of convenience and hap happenstance <clears throat> in order to keep the plot moving but <clears throat> these are minor niggles for what is a near perfect concoction of thriller. Action and emotional character work, a dark thriller and an exhilarating action film. Deliver Us from Evil is one of the year's best movie. Though fatherly guy protects younger girl, it's a movie trope that's been done to death. Yet across Hollywood, Bollywood, Beijing and beyond, the storytelling formula continues to attack both audiences and earliest male action stars. Korean cinema is no exception with 2020's Deliver us from Evil as the latest example of this phenomenon. In Deliver from us from Evil, top grossing actor Huang Jung Min stars as an intelligent officer turned hitman who must save his young daughter from Thai gangsters while simultaneously fending off a Yakuza enforcer. The film displays limited originality with its Thai backdrop and depiction of a transgender character, but Otherwise, focuses on delivering reliable mass market entertainment with little philosophical fuss. At the start of the Deliver Us from Evil, assassin Kim In Nam kills an ethnically Korean Yakuza boss named Korita in what's supposed to be his last hit. Meanwhile, in Thailand, a Korean woman named Seo Young Ju. Drops her young daughter Yumin off at school, however, organ harvesting Thai gangsters kidnapped Yumin. Yudo gets murdered while trying to save her. So these disparate threads come together when Korean authorities notify Innam about Young Ju's death. As it turns out, Kim and Seo were lovers back when Kim was an agent for South Korean's Korea's National Intelligence Service. However, due to a power struggle within the NIS, Kim had to go into hiding and become a hitman, leaving Seo behind and never learning that he had a daughter, Yumi, given to avenge young Jews. Death and save his newfound daughter, Kim travels to Thailand and begins hunting down the gangsters who kidnapped Yumi. Along the way, he enlists a transgender woman named Yu. To help translate and navigate the local landscape. However, there is an extra twist beyond the gangsters. Ray, deceased Yakuza boss Korida's saddest brother, had also come to Thailand to kill Kim in revenge. Deliverance from Evil's Thai backdrop is somewhat novel for Korean action movies, which generally have lower budgets than their Hollywood Breton brethren and thus don't shoot abroad as often. However, Deliver Us from Evil pretty much copies Hollywood's lead in advertising Thailand. The movie shows Thailand as the land of bars, 
drugs and lady boys and treats local characters as expendable cannon fodder. However, deliverance from evils and inclusion of a transgender character with Yui is worth cautiously lauding. While Yui unfortunately perpetuates stereotypes associating Thailand with lady boys, her presence is novel given that the fatherly guard protects younger girl. Yanner usually perpetuates established gender norms instead of challenging them. Deliverance from Evil treats Yui's gender as a non-factor. She is just another character with human motivations and the fact that she is trans in just, is just a natural part of life. Even if South Korean society retains certain conservative attitudes, the fact that a unbashedly mainstream film like Deliver us from Evel can cast a major heartthrob actor as a trans character and earn big bucks at the box office is a positive sign. This shouldn't be surprising though the major Korean dramas like uh, Itaewon class already include trans characters in an encouraging manner. Beyond its setting and trans representation though, Deliver us from Evel is a pretty standard action blockbuster. There's fist fights. Hey, mm. gun fights are plenty and the character development is adequate but not the priority. Asian cinema aptasists might recall the main from nowhere, which is still probably the best Korean movie in the fatherly guy protects younger girl, sub -ganner. But the both the man from nowhere and deliver us from Avel feature farber NIC agents who fight organ harvesting gangsters to rescue a kidnapped girl. Because of this, Deliver Us From Evil feels a lot like somebody transplanted the man from nowhere to Thailand and made the tone less brooding. Whereas, the man from nowhere occurs across dark, rainy days and deploys a blue and black visual palette. Deliver Us From Evil occurs during bright daylight and utilizes warmer colors. In the man from nowhere are fatherly guy, protagonists, seems deeply haunted by his past and deliver us from evil. Kim in Nam's traumas aren't as visible and non-violent supporting character like Yui provide a counterbalance to brutality. This brighter and more humanistic tone makes deliver us from evil more accessible to mass audiences, but also makes it far less contemplative than the man from nowhere. Or other noted revenge film movies like uh, Bittersweet Life. In our view, hunting philosophical echoes are what help action movies will become timeless. So it's a pity that Deliver Us From Evil doesn't lean more in this direction. Despite this, the film still provides a great degree of entertainment and should please anybody looking for a solid action flick. If the title of Hong Wong Won Chan's nihilistic song of a crime thriller deliver us from Evel points to anything, it's that the film's milieu is made up almost entirely of depro deplorable men in a contained ecosystem of violence. Most of them, some might argue all of them, are well beyond any sort of deliverance or redemption. But the film certainly tries to grant its hero just that, through a gamut of root devices, denying the perhaps more interesting anti-romantic streak implied by its fatalistic streak. Of note here is the reunion of a new world stars Hwang Jung-min Jung -min, and Lee Jung-jae, who do their best to bring some spark of life to the film but it's rarely enough in the mo in a movie with so few thematic ideas and mostly bad formal ones Hwang plays in nam a korean hitman who just wants out to the of the game but finds his past hard to escape that past rears its ugly head in the film's two convergent threads when an ex-girlfriend turned up died in thailand after her da daughter Three guesses on daddy's identity is kidnapped. Hwang travels to Thailand to rescue the kid from black market organ traders. A twist so 
characteristically grim it plays and oblivious. Meanwhile, in Nam is pursued by Ray, the sworn blood brother of a Yakuza member in Nam Kilt, embodied by Lee Jung Jai, going wonderfully over the top like a relentless video game villain. Ray's quest for vengeance is generally more engaging than in Nam's redemption arc, in part due to Lee's commitment, but mostly because the development of a dead woman and an endangered child as fuel, fuel for a hitman's pathos is a road. Misogynistic device that Hong never turns into anything more than simplistic sentimentality so that an audience might tear up a little in between bouts of cheering for ultraviolence. It would be remiss in discussing the film's dramatic failures made not to remark upon the film's trans woman character, Yui, who acts as In Nam's guide in Thailand. She is treated as more other people in the film's film are like shit. Though, of course, what's thrown at her is a result of identity rather than affection. Why it's easy to imagine someone mounting a defense of the film's barrage of transphobia as a reflection of the attitudes of its milieu. A fair but honestly tired point. Hung obviously has nothing to say about transgender experience outside of gay. I imagine it's difficult to be trans and centers Yui's entire motivation on her desire for gender affirmation surgery. She is, like in Nam's child, a conduit for simple sympathy and redemption for a hero. Of course, she is played by cisgender Man Park Jong Min in an embarrassingly fussy, tick laden performance and in case you thought famous men being awarded for this fist-tier portrayals of trans women was a distinctly American phenomenon. Part won the Blue Dragon for supporting actor for, the, for his work. The most credit I can muster for this film's representation is that it does please treat transgender and cisgender women equally. So objects to help you perceive the man who just shot 20 guys in the brain as a good person. So no surprise that Deliver Us From Evil is no great shake in its attempts at severe drama, but it's not much as an action film either. In Nam and Ray dispatch plenty of wounds in plenty of ways, so that they will never have to wait too long to see someone get fucked up if that's what you are here for. But the usual problems, arithmetic editing, Obscurant camera angles more mar most of the close quarters fight sequences plus when the fight scenes are so obviously going for hard hitting realism and ill advised overuse of perfunctory speed ramping renders most of its phony. So that's not to say where there are there's no good action. There's a pretty exciting car chase and a solid fight in a stairwell that will brightly pop up out of context on YouTube. But even the best stuff here feels derivative, like a pale imitation of a handful of superior action movies from the past decades. Lee on the other hand, Hoang Jung Min and Lee Jung joined partner up for the first time in seven years since New World. So if you have Asian action films that are all too predictable and dotted with gang culture and violence, you will have no problem sitting through the, this film with ticks along nicely. It's recently never dull and moves at a fast pace, with knives were very much the weapon of choice in most cases. From the start, Hwang Jung Min's In Nam at the lead character is a bit dull. And doesn't quite come across as the strong silent contract killer whom you had think would have a stronger personality despite his best efforts and obvious star power this was not his best lee on the other hand has an unbelievable presence and was a lot more fun to watch as the crazy over the top 
charismatic gangster. You could see he relished playing the bloodthirsty butcher after years of playing romantic leads and stern action heroes. Here he is flamboyant, knife wielding while catwalk ready gangster. Strutting around in goosey sunglasses and white stench coats. You just can't hate him even though he plays the bad guy. Because he is just so engaging. This film might draw a few criticisms but it provides a great degree of entertainment for the right audience and should keep anyone looking for a solid Asian flick happy. Huang Jung Min is in there, a former cop turned paid assassin who has just whacked a Zaikuza in Tokyo. And now this dead man's fanatically violent blood brother Ray is out for revenge. To add to this, in Nam hears that his former girlfriend has been killed in Bangkok following a bungled attempt to make contact with the kidnappers of his nine-year-old nine daughter and the child is still alive in the abductor's hands. So, in Nam journeys to Thailand on a desperate, redemptive mission to save this little girl with the scary and bloody thirsty Ray on his trail. And the only person in Bangkok who can help him in is Yui. Yui is a transgender woman who, for all that she is no mobster, manages at one stage to rent a van with her pickup truck, saving in Nam's life. <clears throat> The twin storylines should determine the film's pace and focus. They don't. There are some impressively spectacular shootouts in the streets and a barn level rooftop chase, together with some very country close quarters martial arts. When his face almost always covered in beads of sweat, is a very persuasive and impassive action hero and Lee is creepy and uproariously over the top. Could he be a Bond villain in the years to come? The 007 franchise could certainly do a lot worse. You have probably seen a movie like Deliver Us from Evil, the second feature helmed by Hong Won Chan. This Korean action thriller is a revenge story about a killer with a hut of tarnished gold, risking it all for an innocent. Like many hitman movies, it's about the ultimate tragedy of someone realizing they want to get out of a murderous lifestyle but can't, and that their lifetime. Spent killing will always be reflected back upon them. Thankfully, though this is the kind of premise that Liam Neeson, Nicolas Cage or countless other actors have churned out as a paycheck. Cashing B-movie, Hong Kong's garnishing of this, his realism with savvy style and again, villain bluster, bolsters the lack of novelty with quality. Deliver us from Elvis. Deliver us from Abel's sweetie thrills might be derivative. But they are far from dead on arrival. In them, a clenched jaw of a hitman has just finished his requisite one last job and is, as nature dictates, immediately pulled back in his ex girlfriend, whom he had to leave when he first started up in the air. This underworld gig needs his help. Her young daughter has been kidnapped, and in them is just enough of a softy for this situation to attack to this, his inn. Bad news for the kidnappers, but also bad news for In Nam, whose last job attracted some ill of its own from a vengeful Yakuza known as the Butcher. The ensuing cascading pursuits hope between languages and locales, all with a straightforward brutality that attests to Hong Kong's skillfully framed scripting, eventually co converging in Bangkok. Here, In Nam meets Yui. A transgender comic relief character who is lending a hand for enough cash to afford surgery. Her over-the-top stick is initially tired and regressive, but she also lends some much-needed emotion to the otherwise hyper-macho ensemble. She is an imperfect character that I wish was never played for laughs and was never played by the sick gender acted park, but I was pleasantly surprised that the writing eventually veered towards depicting her detractors as scummy and her reactions as realistic rather than melodramatic. While Park earned the most critical praise in Korea, showing that this kind of casting attracts similar awards attention outside of Hollywood. It's Lee, who's the real standout of the cast. He's perfectly pitched 
fun and scary embodying and adding nuance to his prototypical garish and serpentine gangster executioner his style is great but his restraint when teasing out the butcher's unhinged and unrelenting nature is better hung lets him to be cool too but kicks a metal pen underneath a soon to be blood victim hanging from the ceiling with an engrossing and terrifying non-challenge it's a slick movie in service of both story and character the combination of which hung kang hung manages is in nearly every scene the contrast between lee and huang is well metered if ever there was going to be another live action yakuza adaptation hung beats takashi miki at his own game conducting these two so he is also got a good eye for stark shadowy images and a solid sense of action timing some effective uses of slow and accelerated motion emphasizing a windshield shattering under shotgun fire or the adrenaline fueled impact of haymakers was just perfectly frequently enough not to feel overbearing these flourishes how fights that's that are sharply staged but really shot with the same groundedness with which they are choreographed scrappy fights done by professionals look like they could evoke the kind of overwhelming in as capable violence of john wick club 2 or in old boy hallway brawl instead in opportune opportune edits jagringly reframe things just when they are hitting up with the kind of detail that realistically shifts the narrative of combat a gun runs out of bullets a knife flies out of a hand or when they threaten to make a statement about the desperation of extended release as often as the fights submerge you in the criminal underworld the whole making choices keep pulling you back out by your collar of course every once in a while it will unleash something superhuman with such panity that you will happily let the film gang you around a dirty job done with reasonable skill deliver us from evel's bleakest moments come when it gives a holy into its stereotype fridging woman writing its lead as overly stoic when huang's much better when he is able to emote plotting a series of two familiar two similar confrontations but huang's ability with camera and tone hint at a filmmaker ready to apply himself to a more unique tale going either deeper into noir nastiness or higher into the over the top action stratosphere stuck in the middle is hitman thriller is a passable showcase of potential action films from asia most notably hong kong and south korea tend to be high quality productions full of energy and dramatic fight scenes deliver us from evil a recent gangland story written by and directed by won chan ho is no exception deliver us from evil comprises two plots which centers center on the same assassin who is itching to step away from the criminal life kim in nam discovers that the girlfriend he left several years ago is not just deceased but has left him a daughter now kidnapped and travels to thailand to find and rescue her at the same time ray a japanese gangster also known as the butcher is on the hunt for in nam as his last victim ray was his blood brother both men are utterly focused on their goals and as they get closer to their targets the head count rises the cast are all excellent even park soi who plays yo min kim in nam's daughter huang jong min's talent shows partially in the early scenes when kim in nam is struggling with force leaving his love then discovering what has happened to her the other actor who is particularly worth nothing noting is park jung min who plays yui the dance woman who kim in nam hires to guide him around bangkok so this role must have been a bold one to take for a popular leading actor in he apparently met with transgender people to get it right but i have to wonder whether trans actors were also considered for the role having directed one film before and write, written several one ten hai has shown he can combine both here i appreciated the way the characters developed and the way the plot string came together though i must say i felt they contributed to a somewhat erratic tone there were several remarkable action scenes fight chases and car crashes made polished by hong kyung pure cinematography using moments of slow motion and lighting to sparkling effect these felt like set pieces 
Though, rather than integrate uh, integral elements to the plot as the change in a mood broke up what was otherwise contemplative in comparison, a determined quest. After all, Kim in Nam was looking for a fight, but looking for a child. What made Deliverus from ever enjoyable was the characters and the action. What made it fascinating was the two themes which were gradually revealed. Firstly, by use of four languages and two contrasting cultural settings, the film deftly demonstrates the co cosmopolitan nature of the criminal underworld. Kim in Nam had contacts all around Asia, but he, have, he was unfamiliar with the special interests of Thai gangs, such as organ trading to order. I was a little baffled at the use of a religious phrase for the title at first until I realized that Deliverance from Evil was a line from the Christian prayer, Our Father. The other theme I noticed in the film was unconventional family relationships. Kim in Nam hadn't known he was a parent, but his commitment to his missing daughter was almost instant. Yui found herself developing a maternal bond towards the child and yet couldn't face her own child who had known her as a father. Despite the ups and downs of to of deliver us from evil, it is a joy to watch. And even though it alternate from interesting to spectacle, I was gripping to find out how things would turn out for the characters I had become attached to. I was so impressed with the team all around that I have already been hunting down other titles that everyone was involved with. <clears throat> From the writer of The Chaser and The Yellow Sea and Reuniting the Stars of the Stunning Gangster, Thriller New World, Deliver Us from Abel is a relentless thriller that melds character and action near perfectly. Despite using well-worn action tropes as a framework to pit two men against one another, the film spins a refreshing take on those these tropes to constantly surprise the viewer and ultimately deliver an emotional love. Starting off relatively low-key. It sees killer for hire in Nam, complete his one last job for his employer in order to retreat, retire and live the quiet life in Panama. However, it's never that easy as an old flame calls on in Nam when her daughter is kidnapped in Bangkok. At first, refusing to get involved in Nam, in man is then forced to search for the child when events take an even darker turn, heading to Bangkok in search of the child in Nam must also deal with the relentless killer who goes by the apt name Ray the Butcher, the brother of the man assassinated in the opening scene by In Man, who is merciless killing machine handle bent on revenge. So far, so familiar. Killer taking one last shot, a kidnapped child in need of rescue and a killer in pursuit to extract revenge are all familiar elements, but deliver us from evil spins a much more complex narrative that pushes the pursuit and the pursuer to their absolute limits. So it's also a film about redemption and how vengeance can all consume, leading the unnecessary death and destruction, but to say any more would be to ruin the film and the surprises it has in store for a first time viewing. Just when one thinks they have a handle on the narrative, it zigs and sort of zags and thrusts the viewer down a new narrative path. It's never in doubt the two leads will clash. But there is so much more going on in Deliver Us From Evil that it's best to know as little as possible to enjoy the ride and experience the emotional impact. In amongst all the chasing and carnage, there is real emotional state threaded throughout as In Nam does everything in his power to find the missing child. A child who is put through unthinkable odds, which elicits never nerve shredding tension as a girl. And In Nam, and thrust into an even darker world. Park So Yi is stunning as the kidnapped young Serang. Likewise, Huang Jung Min and Lee Jung Jai as the two leads are phenomenal, cementing their Korean cinema leading man statuses. But special mention should also go to Park Jung Min, who plays a pivotal power part in proceedings and play a transgender character. Not often given the kind of exposure seen here. It's a welcome and dynamic inclusion and Park Jung Min gives an outstanding performance. Writer and director Won Chan Hong Oscar orchestrates the mayhem with a sword aplomb, delivering some brutal night fights. Gunplay and come the finale, full on chows, meaning the action really delivers. Down and dirty the action is sharply staged, 
and escalates in extremity as the film progresses and the protagonist's flight reaches fever pitch. Yet the action never overshadows the character work. The thriller element, or the emotional core of the film, mention should also go to the score which propels the action and moves attention expertly. And is one of the best scores of recent memory. The action certainly in the second half perhaps becomes a little too outlandish somewhat at odds and with the more grounded sequences we seen earlier in the film and there are a few instances of convenience and hap happenstance <clears throat> in order to keep the plot moving but <clears throat> these are minor niggles for what is a near perfect concoction of thriller action and emotional character work a dark thriller in an exhilarating action film Deliver Us from Abel is one of the year's best movie. Though fatherly guy protects younger girl, it's a movie trope that's been done to death. Yet across Hollywood, Bollywood, Beijing and beyond, the storytelling formula continues to attack both audiences and earliest male action stars. Korean cinema is no exception with 2020's Deliver Us from Abel as the latest example of this phenomenon. In Deliver for Us from Abel, top grossing actor Hwang Jung Min stars as an intelligent officer turned hitman must save his young daughter from Thai gangsters while simultaneously fending off a Yakuza enforcer. The film displays limited originality with its high backdrop and depiction of a transgender character but otherwise focuses on delivering reliable mass market entertainment with little philosophical fuss. At the start of the Deliverance from Evil, assassin Kim in -na kills an ethnically Korean Yakuza boss named Korida in what's supposed to be his last hit. Meanwhile, in Thailand, a Korean woman named Seo Young Ju drops her young daughter Yu Min off at school. However, organ harvesting Thai gangsters kidnapped Yu Min. Yu Do gets murdered while trying to save her. So these disparate threads come together when Korean authorities notify In Nam about Young Ju's death. As it turns out, Kim and Seo were lovers back when Kim was an agent for South Koreans Korea's National Intelligence Service. However, due to a power struggle within the NIS, Kim had to go into hiding and become a hitman, leaving Seo behind and never learning that he had a daughter, Yumin, driven to avenge young Jews. Death and save his newfound daughter, Kim travels to Thailand and begins hunting down the gangsters who kidnapped Yumin. Along the way, he enlists a transgender woman named Yu to help Translate and navigate the local landscape. However, there's an extra twist beyond the gangsters. Ro, deceased Yakuza boss Korida's sadist brother, had also come to Thailand to kill Kim in revenge. Deliverance from Evil's Thai backdrop is somewhat novel for Korean action movies, which generally have lower budgets than their Hollywood brethren, brethren and thus don't shoot abroad as often. However, Deliver us from Evil pretty much copies Hollywood's lead in exercising Thailand. The movie shows Thailand as the land of bars, drugs, and ladyboys and treats local characters as expendable cannon fodder. However, Deliver us from Evil's inclusion of a transgender character with Yui is worth cautiously lauding, while Yui unfortunately perpetuates stereotypes associating Thailand with ladyboys. Her presence is novel given that the Fatherly guy protects younger girl. Yanner usually perpetuates established gender norms instead of challenging them. Deliver us from Abel treats Yui's gender as a non-factor. She is just another character with human motivations and the fact that she is trans in just, is just a natural part of life. Even if South Korean society retains certain conservative attitudes, the fact that an unbashedly mainstream film like Deliver us from Abel can cast a major heartthrob actor as a trans character and earn big bucks at the box office is a positive sign. This shouldn't be surprising though the major Korean dramas like uh, Itaewon class already include trans characters in an encouraging manner. Beyond its setting and trans representation though, Deliver Us from Evil is a pretty standard action blockbuster. There is fist fights and gunfights are plenty and the character development is adequate but not the priority. Asian cinema ethicists might recall the main from nowhere, which is still probably the best Korean movie in the fatherly guy protects younger girl subgenre. But the, both the man from nowhere and deliver us from evil feature farber NIC agents who fight 
organ harvesting gangsters to rescue a kidnapped girl. Because of this, deliver us from evil feels a lot like somebody transplanted the man from nowhere to Thailand and made the tone less brooding. Whereas, the man from nowhere occurs across dark, rainy days and deploys a blue and black visual palette. Deliver us from evil occurs during bright daylight and utilizes warmer colors. In the man from nowhere, our fatherly guy, protagonists, seems deeply hunted by his past and deliver us from evil. Kim in Nam's traumas aren't as visible and non-violent supporting character like Yui provide a counterbalance to brutality. This brighter and more humanistic tone makes Deliver Us from Evil more accessible to mass audiences, but also makes it far less contemplative than The Man from Nowhere or other notable mainstream movies like A Bittersweet Life. In our view, haunting philosophical echoes are what help action movies well become timeless. So it's a pity that Deliver Us from Evil doesn't lean more in this direction. Despite this, the film still provides a great degree of entertainment and should please anybody looking for a solid action flick. If the title of Hong Wong Won Chan's nihilistic song of a crime thriller delivers us from Evil points to anything, it's that the film's milieu is made up almost entirely of deplo deplorable men in a contained ecosystem of violence. Most of them, some might argue all of them, are well beyond any sort of deliverance or redemption. But the film certainly tries to grant its hero just that, through a gamut of rote devices, denying the perhaps more interesting anti-romantic streak implied by its fatalistic streak. Of note here is the reunion of a new world stars Hwang Jung Min, Jung Min and Lee Jung Jai, who do their best to bring some spark of life to the film. But it's rarely enough in the mo in a movie with so few thematic ideas and mostly bad formal ones. Hwang plays in Nam, a Korean hitman who just wants out to the off the game but finds his past hard to escape. That past rears its ugly head in the film's two convergent threads. When an ex-girlfriend turned up died in Thailand after her dark daughter, three guesses on daddy's identity is kidnapped. Hwang travels to Thailand, Thailand to rescue the kid from black market organ traders. A twist so characteristically grim it plays as obvious. Meanwhile, in Nam is pursued by Ray, the sworn blood brother of a Yakuza member in Nam killed, embodied by Lee Jung Jai, going wonderfully over the top like a relentless video game villain. Ray's quest for vengeance is generally more engaging than in Nam's redemption arc, in part due to Lee's commitment was mostly because the development of a dead woman and an endangered child as fuel fuel for a hitman's pathos is a road. Misogynistic device that Hong never turns into anything more than simplistic sentimentality so that an audience might tear up a little in between bouts of cheering for ultraviolence. It would be remiss in discussing the film's dramatic failures made not to remark upon the film's trans woman character, Yui, who acts as in Nam's guide in Thailand. She is treated as more other people in the film's film are like shit. Though, of course, what's thrown at her is a result of identity rather than affection. While it's easy to imagine someone mounting a defense of the film's barrage of transphobia as a reflection of the attitudes of its milieu. A fair but honestly tired point. Hung obviously has nothing to say about transgender experience outside of gay. I imagine it's difficult to be trans and centers Yui's entire motivation on her desire for gender affirmation surgery. She is, like in Nan's child, a conduit for simple sympathy and redemption for our hero. Of course, she is played by cisgender Man Park Jong Min in an embarrassingly fussy, tick laden performance and in case you thought famous men being awarded for their piss poor portals of trans women was a distinctly American phenomenon. Part won the Blue Dragon for supporting actor for, the, for his work. The most credit I can muster for this film's representation is that it does grace, treat transgender and cisgender women equally. So objects to help you perceive the man who just shot 20 guys in the brain as a good person. So no surprise that Deliver Us From Evil is no great shake in its attempts at severe drama. 
but it's not much as an action film either. In NAM entry, dispatch plenty of loans in plenty of ways so that they will never have to wait too long to see someone get fucked up if that's what you are here for. But the usual problems. Arithmetic editing, obscurant camera angles, more mar most of the close cluttered fight sequences plus when fight scenes are so obviously going for hard-hitting realism. An ill-advised overuse of perfunctory speed ramping renders most of its story. So that not to say where there are there's no good action. There's a pretty exciting car chase and a solid fight in a stairwell that will title pop up out of context on YouTube. But even the best stuff here feels derivative, like a pale imitation of a handful of superior action movies from the past decades. Lee, on the other hand, Hoang Jung Min and Lee Jung joy partner up for the first time in seven years since New World. So, if you have Asian action films that are all too predictable and dotted with gang culture and violence, you will have no problem sitting through the, this film with ticks along nicely. It's recently never dull and moves at a fast pace, with knives very much the weapon of choice in most cases. From the start, Hoang Jung Min's in Nam at the lead character is a bit dull and doesn't quite come across as the strong, silent, contract killer whom you had think would have a stronger personality despite his best efforts and obvious star power. This was not his best. Lee, on the other hand, has an unbelievable presence and was a lot more fun to watch as the crazy, over-the-top, charismatic gangster. You could see he relished playing the bloodthirsty butcher after years of playing romantic leads and stern action heroes. Here he is flamboyant, knife wielding white, cat to walk ready gangster, strutting around in goosey sunglasses and white stench coats. You just can't hate him even though he plays the bad guy. Because he is just so engaging. This film might draw a few criticisms, but it provides a great degree of entertainment for the right audience and should keep anyone looking for a solid Asian flick happy.